everybody, and welcome to Christ Church Pueblo West. It's so good to have you here this morning. We have wonderful sunshine, no snow as of yet, a bit of a breeze, but I think we just might make this work this morning, and we're very grateful that you are here with us. And so we changed things up just a little bit this week, uh, and um, the order is going to be uh, I'm going to talk to you right now, then we're going to go right into some music, and then the prayer, and then more music. And so, just so that you don't feel lost, I think I got it right on the, in the bulletin. You'll have to have a look, and for those of you at home, I know it'll be uh, just, a, just a great opportunity to hang in there and, and enjoy uh, what we're going to share with you this morning. And so, I wanted to give you a heads up, those of you who are here in the parking lot this morning, uh, in your bulletin on the... Um, uh, on the back of the, I'm sorry, on the inside, at the bottom underneath the section that is marked for notes, where you can take notes, there's a little poll. And I, I didn't word it particularly wonderful, but what it is, is we're asking you if you're comfortable to go back into the building or if you are more comfortable staying in your vehicles in the parking lot at this point in time. Obviously, at some point, the plan is for us to go back in the building. And what we're trying to gauge is kind of where you are right now uh, in relation to your comfort and, and the idea of uh, needing to wear a mask. And so here's what I want you to do for me right now. I would like you right at this very moment, if you have the bulletin that's got the poll in it in your hand, to please take the time and fill it out. Uh, tear off the bottom of it, and then I would like you to stick it in the offering box as you exit the parking lot this morning. Uh, and let us know uh, where you are, where you fall as far as if you're comfort level is uh, leading you to say yes it's okay for us to okay for us to go back into the building you're, you're comfortable with that because that's the the ultimate goal for us and we are working towards that uh, so if you would fill that out I'd appreciate it and then I want to remind you that uh, coming up here in a couple of weeks um, on April the 4th will be our Easter celebration and we're going to have a first Easter sunrise service uh, and it will be at 6.30 right here in the parking lot, and that service will have, it will be, it won't be the full length of our regular service, but it will have communion, uh, so you don't have to come back to the 9.30 service if you would like to have, if you're worried about having communion, because we will have it uh, in the uh, 6.30 uh, service, so that's, uh, that's good for you to know. So 6.30, Sunday morning on Easter, April the 4th, but also if you would rather come at 9.30, uh, we will be at, at 9.30, and I will tell you this, we are only going to live stream the 9.30 service. We will not be doing live stream from the sunrise service. So if you're looking to, to tune in uh, from wherever you are on Easter morning, it'll be uh, at the regular time, 9.30. The 6.30 sunrise service is one that we were looking forward to having you here in person. So, all right, uh, then I want to... Uh, Call your attention to our blessing box right over here. It is getting a lot of attention from uh, our Pueblo West community, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, we probably have maybe two or three people come and take, and about 15 uh, come to uh, fill it back up. And so right now, uh, if, uh, if anybody out there or anybody in the parking lot has a, uh, people in their lives who they think might benefit from taking advantage of... Uh, the, the non-perishable food items that have been so generously shared in the blessing box, please spread the word because uh, we're uh, really hoping that uh, we're going to be able to, to help some people through some rough patches. This isn't uh, obviously set up in such a way that you can come and get meals every single night or anything like that, but you can certainly get uh, a, a good couple of grocery bags full of, of food, and we've got plenty to refill it with, so take whatever you need and... and uh, Come back for more if you need to, but uh, we want to let you know that it is there and available. And, and thank you so much to everyone who has been uh, so generously supplying uh, food items for the Blessing Box. Then uh, moving on, uh, a Caring Pregnancy Center, we're continuing to, uh, uh, to use the little change banks that they have provided for us to do fundraising uh, for them. And so uh, at that point, uh, at this point, we have those and, and uh, we have donated to them what you have already given to us and it has um, it has been uh, a really great thing it's basically been uh, the equivalent of two gallons of change uh, in uh, gallon ziplocs and so yeah it's that's a, a good chunk of money let me tell you what it it, it was kind of heavy uh, when we passed it off to uh, the ACPC folks and so uh, thank you so much for 
taking part in that. Uh, Bible study for this week, this, this coming week, is going to be uh, spring break, and so we're going to take a week off from the Zoom Bible study and from the, um, the Impact Zoom meeting that uh, meets on Wednesday and Thursdays, but we will be back at it a week from this Wednesday, and so uh, if, uh, if you're thinking about joining, uh, joining in, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 11, a week from this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Get in touch with me either through uh, the church's email, phone phone call or whatever, and we'll get you on the list. Uh, we've really had some great uh, great Bible studies up until this point for, through the first 10 chapters of Matthew. So we are, uh, we're really enjoying that. And, and with the weather warming up, uh, kids, get ready because we're going to get started in the parking lot here. As things warm up, we're going to start doing some outdoor stuff. And keep an eye out because the parking lot bowling tournament is in the works, and we're going to have that coming up again. Uh, probably towards the end of April, weather permitting, uh, prizes and, and uh, food and, and just a really good time out here in the parking lot. Those of you who were here last year, I'm sure remember how much fun we had doing that. And so that'll be kind of the kickoff to our uh, getting our youth back uh, at meeting on a regular basis here at the building. So all of those things, all of those things are going on. And if you've got any questions about any of it, please don't. Don't hesitate to reach out either through Facebook, phone call, email, text, smoke signals, whatever works for you uh, is all good and, and let us know. Now, once again, a reminder, please, please fill out that poll for us and stick it in the offering box on your way out. Thank you very much. and We're really so grateful that you're here this morning and helping us share some worship time and Christy's ready to get going. So. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you this morning. We're going to try something a little bit different. The kiddos are gone, our worship team here, so yeah, we're going to worship together. And um, oh, there, okay. Okay, got to stop. Here we go. Why not, right? Let's stop it. This is the way it goes. Um, they participated in a Christian fine arts competition um, with a worship team that they've got together that are all youth. And uh, they went up to Denver on Sunday and they took first. So, woohoo! Right? So, um, the fellow church of ours that they're, they're um, together with, that they're, they put this little group together, um, they asked the, the team to lead worship at their church this morning. So, um, yay! Excited for them that they can take steps forward, right? Amen! And now we can still be here and we're going to worship with God. So let's... Um, hopefully everything works the way that I practiced it to go, and either way, we're just going to worship God because his presence is here, and he is why we are here, and he is so good to us, and our worship is what expresses our love towards him, and that's all we can do, right? Let's give our best and give our worship. Amen? All right.
Amen. Give him a praise this morning. Honk your horn if you love Jesus. All righty. Good morning. Good morning, church. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, just now in that one verse that, uh, that Christy was singing, it said, pour, pour out your power and love. And, and that's what Brian's going to talk about today. He's continuing his sermon series um, called Poured Out. And so that's what, we're, that's what I want you to think about today and tomorrow and the next day. And, and, and I was trying to think, as again, as I was preparing for my prayer, and I'm like, how does Jesus pour into us? How does Jesus pour into me and how can I pour it out? Because that's, that's what Brian's going to be talking about today. And so Jesus pours into us in the form of the Holy Spirit. If, if you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit here. And so my question for all of you in my prayer today is, what are you doing to pour out that Holy Spirit? What are you doing to pour out and share that Holy Spirit? And... Um, I shared it yesterday with a client, and I didn't get a text back, but I'm really glad I shared it. <laughs> so anyway, we'll see what I get out of it. Uh, but I know it's for Jesus. But are you are you generous? Are you sharing your time? Not necessarily money. It doesn't have to be money. Are you sharing of yourself and of your heart? Are you understanding of others? Sometimes that's a, that's a hard one. Or actually, even better than that, are, are you um, loving your enemies? Brian talks about that a lot. That's a hard one. Are you understanding? Are you praying for others? But the kicker is, let's love others through Christ. That's how we can pour out ourselves. So pray with me. Father God, thank you so much for all that you give us. Thank you for pouring, pouring yourself into us in the form of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving us that blessing. And, and Father, I ask today... Help me to be that broken vessel. Help me to be that cracked pot that I can share and pour out your Holy Spirit to others. I want to be that example. You are first and foremost in my life. And I want to be the example for others so that people ask, why? What is it? What, what it what, why, why is she acting that way? I want to share it with them. So Father God, be with all of us this week. Help us to be that broken vessel so that we can pour out your Holy Spirit on others. Be with Brian as he gives your message and Christy as she worship, helps us to worship you and be with the kids today as they worship you as well. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.
All right. So, thank you so much for bringing the Spirit into this service. Christy does such an amazing job. Whether the kids are here or not, we are so blessed to have her as part of our team. And so, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And I want you to know, I want you to know, she is so passionate about what she does that there are, there are Sunday mornings when there are tears shed getting ready for our service. And I, and I got to tell you, I love working with somebody like her because she pushes me to a new level. And I know some of you are saying, well, we're, when are we going to see that? And so I, I would tell you I'm working on it. But Christy, Christy is already there. We are so grateful for her. So this morning, we are at the point of our service where we share... We share in a connection with our Savior with something called communion or the Lord's Supper. And so those of you who have come to know Jesus Christ as your, both your Lord and your Savior, I don't, we don't, we don't really doesn't matter where you made the decision, but if you're here with us this morning or, or online with us, we invite you to take part if you have made that decision in communion with us today. And so I want to share... This morning from Luke chapter 22, and it's Jesus and the disciples, and they're they're together in a room, and it goes like this, starting in verse 14. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. Then he said, Take this and share it among yourselves, for I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. Jesus is telling them that the end is coming for for his ministry on earth. And then verse 19. He took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. And then he broke it into pieces and he gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. See, Jesus broke the bread and he gave it to them, symbolizing his broken body that was going to be offered up for them. Hadn't yet, but it was about to be. And just as the first disciples did, we as followers of Jesus today, we eat this bread together to remember, to remember his sacrifice. And at that point when he did this with the disciples, they really weren't exactly sure what he was talking about. But much later on, afterwards, after Jesus had been beaten, flogged, hung on the cross, they would start to understand what he was talking about in this last supper. So this morning, if you've got your your communion with you, or at home if you've got a cracker and, and uh, some, some juice, <clears throat> then let's take the cracker part out and remember that this is the body. This represents the body that was broken for you and for me. Let me pray for us. Lord, we are so grateful for you sending your son to rescue us to take the punishment, to take the beatings that, quite honestly, were meant for us. And when we take of this bread as part of our communion service, we do it in remembrance of a Savior who didn't come to sacrifice us, but came to sacrifice for us. And so it's with great thanks and humility that we take and we remember. In Jesus' name we pray.
20 says this, after supper, he took another cup of wine and said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. As the church partakes of this meal together, we affirm our common faith that in Christ's substitutionary atoning sacrifice, our new covenant, our new covenantal relationship, our unified relationship with him and his ongoing spiritual presence in our lives. As the Apostle Paul told the church in Corinth, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. We remember his death. We remember his death for us in the past and utilize its power and provisions for us in the present. And he returns for us in the future. Lord, thank you for coming and shedding the blood that has washed us clean, that has saved us from sin. There is nothing else, no other way for us to be saved or cleansed than through your blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blood that was willfully poured out for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please fill out the little poll there and tear that off and include that with your offering into the box so that uh, we get an idea of where your heart is and how you're seeing your worship experience. So thank you very much for that. So this morning, I just want to remind you that God gives us so much. And we can do whatever we want with it. We really can. We have free will. We can spend it on ourselves. We can spend it on things that just don't last. Or we can make an investment. An investment in eternity. An investment that's going to pay off down the road when we are spending our forever in the presence of our Savior. There's good investing and then there's great investing. And great investing is eternal investing. So, let's ask God to show us what that looks like. Father, we are so grateful for the things that you give us because all that is good comes from you. And we pray that you would give us the wisdom to know what to do with what you've given us to best, to best help your kingdom grow here on earth. We look forward to being a part of your plan. And Lord, may we surrender everything you ask us to surrender without a single argument so that we would be right in line with your will and your direction. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so at this point, we've got some young people with us this morning. And, and you know, I, 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 I'm having a hard time seeing some of you, but I know that you're here. And so what I want to know is, and you can have 
whoever's sitting uh, at the steering wheel honk the horn or you can wave. Do you raise your hand if you have a favorite drink? Do you have a favorite, whether it's a, a favorite pop or a favorite juice or a favorite Kool-Aid? You got something that's a favorite thing to drink? Yeah, R Dusty's saying yes. Bria, yes. Riley, yeah. We got some favorite drinks going on over here with the Velasquez family. Yeah, and and I bet Maywin's got something that she loves to drink. Uh, and and yep, she's ra raising her hand. Uh, and so, what happens? Cecily, if you have a big glass of your favorite drink and it dumps over and pours out, is that, yeah, oh, lower lip came out, like that. Yes, it's sad, right? You, you, and and what, what would we call that? Riley, if everything spills out, is that, that it, something happened. It's, that drink has been not only spilled, empty, something with a W. How about wasted? All right, the drink's been wasted because it's all over the floor and you can't, or the ground, and you can't, can't drink it now, can you? Because it's been poured onto the floor. It's been poured onto the ground. Where should it be? Byron, where should your favorite drink go? In your tummy? Yeah, it should go in your tummy. Bria, when you have your favorite drink, do you, do you slam it or do you drink a little bit at a time because you like it so much? Bria slams it. Yep, she slams it. I knew it because it's so good. Well, God has told, an, uh, told us that our lives need to be poured out as well. And we can pour them out in a way that is wasteful, just like spilling our favorite soda or our favorite Kool-Aid or whatever, or we can pour them out in such a way as to get a benefit from them or to give a benefit from them. So, students, guys, when God says... I want you to pour out for me. What he's saying is, I want you to get involved. I want you to spend your life doing stuff for the kingdom, for things that are going to be eternally valued, meaning forever. It's going to have a value forever. So pour yourself out so that we would be able to, to see a benefit from, from what you're doing in God's kingdom. So just like your favorite drink, don't waste yourself on things that are unimportant and end up having yourself poured out on the ground. Let me pray for you. Lord, thank you so much for our young people. Thank you so much for their desire to be plugged into what you're doing. We ask that you would give them your spirit, your excitement, your presence, that they would be poured out in service to you. Lord, we look forward to what you're doing from here on out through them, because you've already done some amazing things through them, and we have great expectations, and we are excited for the possibilities. Thank you for our young people. They are such a blessing. Please protect them. Please watch over them, and please keep them close. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thanks, guys. There you go. Thank you. So this past New Year's Eve, We had a handful of teenagers at our home to ring in the new year, and they came to hang out with Andrew and Ashley. And it was a great evening. We had a really good time. We played games. We had lots of food and, and non-alcoholic drinks. You know, the, the other thing is that the kids that came to spend that night with us, they spent the night. They stayed overnight so that there were, we didn't want any added risk by having them out on the road on New Year's Eve. And when... When everything was over, when we were cleaning up the house on New Year's Day, there were several bottles of water that were partially full that were left on tables and counters and, and just kind of discarded there. But they still had some water in them. And we had, we had come up with these drink ideas. There, I, I'm sure you've seen them. They're the little packets of flavoring that you can dump into a bottle of water and turn it into basically any flavor that you like. And so we gave the kids the... Uh, the choice to pick what they wanted, whatever flavoring they wanted. And so we had, we had several bottles throughout the house that still had portions of liquid left in them. And so the bottles then, we, as we picked them up, we took them over to the sink and we, we poured them out and then threw away the bottle. And I'm sure that you've probably, you've probably done the same thing after a gathering or two in your home. Well, in, in Philippians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul gives a similar illustration of what was happening with his life. 
And as I mentioned in last week's sermon, he says that it is his, in his life that his life is being poured out. Now, many people may think that, like the bottles of water being poured into the sink, that Paul's life was being wasted. But the truth is, unless we pour our lives out like he did, it's we who are wasting our lives. Philippians chapter 2, verse 17. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering, on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I continue to be glad and rejoice with you all. Pastor and author John Piper writes, I will tell you what a tragedy is. I will show you how to waste your life. Consider this, this story from a February 1998 Reader's Digest. A couple, they took early retirement from their jobs in the Northeast about five years ago when he was 59 and she was 51. Now, now they live in Punta Gorda, Florida, where they cruise on their 30-foot trawler, they play softball, and they collect shells. So picture them, standing before Christ at the great day of judgment, saying, Look, Lord, see my shells? That is a tragedy. God created us, you see, to live a single passion to joyfully display His supreme excellence in all spheres of life, and the wasted life is the life without this passion. God calls us to pray and to think and to dream and to plan and to work, not to be made much of, but to make much of Him through our lives. Most people slip by in life without a passion for God, spending their lives on trivial diversions, living for comfort and for pleasure, and perhaps trying to avoid sin. Now, the past two weeks, I've been pointing to something called a drink offering. And as we continue this morning, I want to express my thanks to, to Pastor Sean Thomas, whose ideas and sermon on this topic have laid the foundation for today's message. So, a drink offering was when wine, and we talked about this before, wine would be poured out onto the altar as part of the sacrifice. And in Genesis 35, Jacob sets up a pillar for worship and to commemorate a meeting that he'd had with God. And this, this meeting happened at Bethel. And it was there that God changed Jacob's name. He changed his name from Jacob to Israel. So Jacob, Israel, consecrated this altar by pouring out a drink offering. We've talked about how the drink offering was to accompany a burnt offering as explained in Exodus chapter 29. It was part of the sacrifice then that was being offered to the Lord, and these were both basically the same thing. The Apostle Paul points to, the sim to a similar picture as he references what is happening in his own life when he tells us that it's being poured out. Many people believe that like the bottles of water that I poured down the sink at the conclusion of our New Year's Eve party, that Paul's life was being wasted. But the reality is, as we said before, it's not... It's not only lives which are being poured out like his that are being wasted. It's the, it's the lives that are not being poured out like his that are being wasted. So, it, once again, if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all, says Paul in Philippians chapter 2. And in case you didn't know it, Paul was in prison at this point. He was in prison in Rome for the sake of the gospel. He, he was in chains, and during this time... He didn't know if this was going to end up costing him his life or not. But he was open to that possibility. In fact, that's why he says that if, even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and I rejoice. He's telling us that he is happy that he could spend his life this way. And to emphasize his joy at being used in this way by God, he illustrates it by painting a word picture that is central to the verse, I am being poured out as a drink offering. Now, that being said, I have here a little 
container that's got some water in it and we want to be able to say that we would pour ourselves out as well. And so when we do that, it seems like that's all there is. You pour it out and it's gone. Well, to emphasize his joy at being used by the, in this way, that he says that it's a good thing to be poured out. And pointing to, instead of using wine for personal pleasure by drinking it, it would be poured out as a sacrifice that would be pleasing to God. While it may have meant that it would be wasted in terms of personal use, this wine being poured out, it was well spent as a sacrifice to God. So in this verse, Paul is comparing his life to just such a drink offering. He compares himself to that cup of wine when he says, I'm being poured out for this drink offering. But instead of being poured out on an altar, he saw his life as being poured out as a sacrifice to or for the Lord's work. Paul wasn't fully poured out at the time that he penned the words in the letter to the church at Philippi, but that came later. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, he writes, As for me, my life has already been poured out as an offering to God. The time of my death is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. And so, at the end of his life, Paul certainly was poured out for the sake of the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, when you have your life in a vessel and you continue to pour it out for the Lord, it makes a difference. However, the truth is that Paul's life was not just poured out at the conclusion of his life, but actually, actually, his life was being poured out the entire time that he lived. He gave up what was important to him personally, calling things like accomplishments, his heritage, or his background, all just a loss. In reality, in reality, what Paul was doing was pouring out his life as he was serving God, in the process. And instead of spending his life in ways that would have pleased him personally, such as his own pleasures, family, career, you know, those kinds of things. He then poured it out for God instead. And after his encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, Paul's entire life became a drink offering to the Lord. Paul goes on to write in Philippians 4, What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. Paul's calling us to imitate him, to do what he did, allowing our lives to be used by God, spent, poured out for the sake of advancing the kingdom. Paul's saying that all of those things that we as a culture value on a personal level, all of those things are things that we should sacrifice on the altar of the kingdom. You know, things like pursuit of our own happiness. And we are called to do just that. Exactly that, imitating Paul to become also a drink offering and poured out for the sake of God's glory in the world. The concept of being poured out may not be a popular one with a lot of people. I mean, think about it. It makes sense. Who wants to give up their own personal happiness? Who would want to do that? Who would want to give up their own personal happiness and have their life poured out like a partially filled water bottle? But let me ask you, don't you think that your life will be poured out no matter what you choose to do with it? Time passes so quickly. And honestly, Scripture tells us that our lives are but a vapor. Here one moment, gone the next. Our hours, our days, they're already being poured out one after another. I'm sure that you know people like this. Some are pouring their lives out for their jobs. Some are pouring their lives out for sports, and some are pouring their lives out in pursuit of happiness, whatever that might entail. And the truth is that when you pour your life out like that, that's what leads to wasting it. 
a wasted life. Someone once observed that a wasted life is really nothing more than a collection of wasted days. As God gives us life, each, each one of us starts a new year with the same number of opportunities, 365. 365 opportunities that we can choose to either use and invest in eternal things or allow to drift by without taking advantage of the gift that we've been given. You see, the difference between those who succeed and those who fail is not found primarily in talent, but it's found in diligence and in effort. And unfortunately, most people live out their lives wasting their time on things that serve no good purpose. And these people may look at someone like Paul and say, what a waste. You're a fool for pouring your life out like that. But the truth is that they're pouring their lives out too. Their days are slipping by and their lives are being poured out. A pouring out is most certainly unavoidable. Every one of us is pouring out our lives one way or another. The question is not whether or not your life will be poured out, because it will. The only question is, what will you pour your life out on? You see, you do have a choice. You can pour it out in pursuit of your own personal happiness and self-centered pleasures. Or you can pour it out for the sake of the kingdom, the kingdom of God. Outreach Magazine tells of a young William Borden. You may be familiar with that last name as the family business was Borden Dairies. Still is. Well, in the early 1900s, 16-year-old William Borden graduated from a Chicago high school. He was a, an heir to this Borden, to the Borden fortune. And he began his Ivy League education at Yale University, but before that, his parents set him on a trip around the world for his graduation present. Early in Borden's life, he had come to Christ through the great ministry of D.L. Moody in Chicago, and while on his trip around the world, something happened that no one expected. As Borden traveled, as he traveled through Asia, through the Middle East, and through Europe, he felt a growing burden for the world's hurting people. Borden wrote a letter to his parents, and he informed, that, informed them that he wanted to spend the remainder of his life being a missionary. Upon hearing the news, one of his friends remarked, that he would be throwing his life away as a missionary. Upon his return, Borden went on to Yale University. He graduated. He then studied and graduated from Princeton Theological Seminary. And when Borden finished his Ivy League education, he boarded a ship headed for China to serve as a missionary. Due to his passion, however, to reach the Muslim people, he stopped in Egypt because he wanted to learn the Arabic language. While he was in Egypt, 25-year-old Borden contracted spinal meningitis, and within a month, he was dead. And when the news of Borden's death was cabled back to the United States, nearly every major American newspaper reported on it. As stated in his biography, a wave of sorrow went around the world. He not only gave up his fortune, but himself to be a missionary. Borden had walked away from his wealthy fortune to take the gospel of Jesus to the nations of the world. Most regarded it as a tragedy. However, God took the tragedy and did something far greater than Borden could ever have done himself. When thousands of young men and women read Borden's story in the newspapers of America, it inspired them to leave all that they had and give their lives to reach the nation's with the gospel of Jesus Christ. When Borden's parents were given his Bible, they found the following. Just after he renounced his fortune to go to, into missions, he wrote the words, no reserve. His father told him he would always have a job in the company, and then, then at a later point he rescinded it. His father told him that he would never let him work in the company again. And then at that time, Borden wrote in his Bible, no retreat. And then they discovered his Bible, in his Bible, these words written shortly before his death in Egypt. No regret. Was his life a waste? Not from God's perspective. God used his life and death to call thousands and thousands of young men and women 
to leave all that they had and give their lives to reach the nations for the gospel. God did greater things through Borden's story than he may ever have done with his life had he become a missionary in China. And while some may still look at Borden's life as a waste, I think that the Apostle Paul would see it differently. He would see that Borden has poured out his life serving the Lord, which is a reason for rejoicing. Pouring our lives out to advance the kingdom of God has eternal value, whereas when we pour our lives out for ourselves, it's only temporal. When you look back at your life, what are you going to rejoice in having done? You won't find joy in countless hours of television or video game playing. You won't wish you'd spent more time on Facebook or surfing the Internet. You won't even care about the awards that you've won or the money that you've made or the stuff that you've accumulated. Your joy will be found in one place and one place only. Your joy is going to be found in the ways in which you poured out your life for the Lord. And that's it. That's the one thing, the one place where you're going to find your joy. And how do I know that? In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, Jesus says this. He said it to his disciples and he's saying it to you. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. When you spend your life serving yourself, you will lose it forever. But lose your life in serving the Lord, and you have made an investment that lasts forever. John Piper says this, The American dream beckons people to spend their lives on trivial diversions, slipping through life, caught up with seeking success, comfort, and pleasure above all else. But God designed people for far more than this. Don't waste your life. Invest it. Pour it out. Pour it out as a drink offering to the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be in your family, to be a part of your plan, to have the resources that you pour into us that we may then pour out in service to you. Lord, our lives get poured out one way or another. Please show us what that looks like for each of us because how it looks for one may not be the same way that it looks for another and we need to know. You put these things upon our hearts and give us the ears to hear and the eyes to see what you're talking about. Help us to know. And once we know, help us to have the courage to act and to pour our lives out to serve you in such an amazing way as to one day hear you say to us, well done, my good and faithful servant. We're grateful for your son and for the saving graces that you have poured out upon us. May we pour our lives out from here on in service of you. In Jesus' name we pray. song that was just a cry from our heart and when Pastor Brian and I were talking about this morning service and I was going over the list and praying over what it was that the Lord wanted us to sing this morning um, this is all that kept coming in my heart and I haven't sang it in probably <laughs> how old am I <laughs> doesn't matter <laughs> either way um, it was on my heart and it's what I feel like um, the Lord wanted me to share with you this morning. So um, I pray that it blesses your heart, touches your soul, um, that you would make it a prayer from your heart, um, that we would just ask God that he would show us his way, He would that we would be able to hear his voice, that he would open the eyes of our hearts to do what it is that 
to know what it is that he would have us to do and when the moment comes, when it's time to pour out, when it's time for him to use us, which is all the time. But sometimes you, there are those like definite, definite moments. And being in tune with the Holy Spirit for those key moments so that way we may reach out to others and that we may do what he has called us to do. So join with me in singing this song. God to cleanse our hearts and to, to open us up to his word and to his spirit. Great things happen. Amazing things happen. Things that you were created to do because you weren't created to just be a mundane, average person. You were created to bring light into this world, to show the kingdom to others by what God has done through you. When you have somebody like Christy who can share 
her heart, the heart that God has put in her, not only by singing other people's music, but by expressing what he has poured into her, that's what I'm talking about. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like for Christy. It's going to look a whole lot different for you and me. But when we find those things, we end up being a part of God's plan and God's purpose. And there is no greater blessing, let me tell you. You can live 96 years and at 95 and a half, all of a sudden figure out what your purpose is and that last six months of your life would be the absolutely best part of your life ever. So don't wait. Find out what that purpose is now because things will only get better. And God will bless others through you, which is going to be a great blessing for you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us this morning, whether you're in the parking lot or online. We're so grateful that you're here. Those of you who are here with a bulletin in your hands, don't forget to to fill out our little poll so that uh, we can move forward and know what our timing should look like. We're we're hopeful that uh, as things are healing and and, and uh, we're seeing less and less of this, this virus that we're going to be able to, to move back inside the building at some point. But you know, it doesn't mean that we'll abandon the parking lot. We've come to love our parking lot. And the time that we spend out here, whether... Now, let me tell you real quick. This morning, this is Colorado. We started off, the wind was coming from the west, so we put the, the tarp on this side now it's coming from the east and so it does us no good but it looks good there that's probably about it so thank you so much for being here with us this morning joetta will uh, will be down here at the end of the sidewalk with the box and, and looking forward to re- receiving your offerings and your your little poll so we will be back with you again next sunday uh, once again we are taking spring break and we're going to be uh, absent for a few days but we will be here next week on sunday We look forward to sharing that with you. And in the meantime, pour out your life for the Lord. Love you. See you. Take care.